Hey coach, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Appreciate you guys checking it out. This week for me has been uh, talking about how to make uh, misdirection work in your offense. And so I uh, spent the first part of this doing old wing T uh, where you're doing series based offense, uh, which I think is a huge concept. A lot of coaches, especially I know I was this way younger, uh, didn't build plays off of each other. You know, an offense should build off of itself. Uh, if you really want to take advantage of a defense, you make multiple plays look the same, and that's very hard to defend. And so that's what we're trying to do in our offense. So spent uh, a little bit of time early this week talking about series-based. Then we spent a little bit of time talking about how to make one play multiple, and I use buck sweep as my first play. The second play I'm going to use is our counter. So these are, these are plays that are built into a series, so they'll work with whatever you want to do. Uh, but... These are also plays that we wanted to make standalones. So we want to be able to run Buck as a standalone play where we could read multiple guys and, and do different things with it. Well, we wanted to do the same thing with our counter. Uh, I've been taking a lot of questions, guys, off of Facebook groups and Twitter and in my YouTube as well. If you've got something you'd like for me to address before I get into this, here's my contact info as I kind of move on. Uh, this stuff is coming out of my offense although offenses should adapt and adjust. So it may not be counter that's your play, but maybe it's a different play you're running. Think about it this way. That's kind of what this whole week has been about is causing, I hope you and, and for, for sure me, uh, to think about how we can make our offense more uh, deceptive to a, uh, to a defense. And so you do that through multiple ways. Today we're going to talk about counter. If you'd like this whole series, it's on Coach Tube. I've also got my counter uh, course, so you can go through and get in depth on that. If that's something you're interested in running, how we do it, what we adjust, all that stuff, that's out there. So feel free to go get it if you want. Of course, I've got multiple books as well, our playbook and other things I've got on my website also. All right, so we're going to talk about counter. We do counter several ways, so I don't want to get into just the, make this whole counter game YouTube. I was more about the philosophy of it. If you want the counter game stuff, it's out there. So for us on counter, we want it to look just like Buck. So we're going to hand the ball off just like it's Buck sweep, and then we're going to hand the ball back off to our wing coming through the other direction, kind of like an underneath handoff or double handoff of your wing tee, or we just call it counter. Okay, so we can use the same blocking a couple of different ways, but generally counter to us tells us that our wing back is going to get the ball coming back through usually BC gap on the back side. So it's a double handoff look. That's the base way we run it. Okay, I've got another clip here of just kind of a base way we're going to run it. So you can see here we run it as part of our buck series. So we run buck sweep, buck sweep, buck sweep. Here's our counter. We're going to pull kick. We're going to pull wrap try to get our guy out there uh, taking advantage of an overzealous defense. You know, a defense has decided they're going to fly when we're running buck. So here we come. We're going to come right back and run the counter, All right? That's the base way we run it. Here it is, you know, when we first put it in. This is probably, you know, three, four years ago, us running counters, third and eight. We're going to run counter, full kick, full wrap, counter. Okay, so that's the base way we run it. We don't call an RPO, that's what we do. All right, so that's just kind of the vanilla way it goes. It's still a great play, good standalone. You don't have to RPO that. Okay, but we started getting into a couple of years ago, I had a kid at quarterback, actually the same kid right here at quarterback, who'd been in our system now for, he'd been two or three years, and we, we, we noticed he was pretty good at reading the defense. And so we started wanting to play with well, what about if we want to run counter and this guy's a problem or that guy's a problem? How are we going to make it multiple for us? Okay, so we started going to, okay, let's try formationally. Talk about this with Buck Sweep. Let's go formationally now. Let's get teams into a bad situation by going empty. Because in our offense, empty is hard to line up to when you have that tight end wing surface and you're an empty. That's very difficult to line up to. It kind of forces the defense's hand of where are you going to play all your guys? And generally, they're going to go tight end wing on the run game, which allows us to come back and run counter. So the first thing we're going to do is run it easy. We can throw the screen here if we want it. They're in man, so we didn't throw the screen there. But if we wanted to, we can throw the screen, or we can run counter. 
It's an easy read for our quarterback. It's, it's all pre-snap. So we're done, it's not post-snap. He can throw it right now. If he doesn't like it, he can hand it off. It is an option, you know, but it's an easy read. Okay. We're going to draw the defense out. A lot of times by him looking that direction, we'll actually draw the inside linebacker out. You can kind of see right here, watch this inside back. When he sees a screen look, he gets lost. Okay. And now he's easier to block. And so it's just another way of saying, we're going to run this to put this player right here in conflict. By looking this way, we think he'll go out there because there's a threat of a screen. And then we're going to hand the ball off underneath. And you see it there. So it's an easy, same play. You know, we're just trying to put a guy in conflict. We're trying to give him issues. All right. Then we'll come back and we'll run empty a different flavor. So now we got trips empty here. And now we're going to make this guy the conflict player. So we're going to run a screen. We're going to block counter. We're going to read him. If he lets us throw the screen, we'll throw it. If not, we'll either run it or we'll pitch it. And so it becomes that triple option stuff. So we'll, uh, same deal, though. It's counter. All our offensive line is running counter. These guys are running our bubble screen, and our quarterback is staring here. And you can watch the reaction we get. He goes, I can run, or I can shovel it underneath, and it gives you kind of some outlets. It's just a new way of running the same play. It takes some reps, but really – that's not very difficult if you're saying, look at that guy and read him. If he flies, run it. If he comes to you, throw the screen. And so these are easy plays for us to make the same blocking scheme different, to give the defense a whole different look. You remember when we first started this, the first play we ran was normal counter against this same defense. Well, now we're running counter again, but we're dressing it up this way. So to them, it's really causing problems because they're seeing it multiple ways. Finally, we started getting into, okay, what if we want to read players? You know, we want to read linebackers like here. If he flies or this guy flies, we're going to read these guys. So quarterback, we're going to read. We're going to pull, run counter. We're going to read, pull it, and then now make that corner jump up and throw it over his head. It wasn't even really that great a read, but the concept is good. These guys come flying in. I can pull it. He could have run through there. Let me kind of pause it. I don't want to get into just a counter session here. He could have pulled it, which he did. Yeah, so I can pause it here. Okay, when he pulled it, he had the option right here. He could have run that ball, or he could throw the ball. It just depends on what you trust your quarterback. The idea, though, is not so much, hey, you need to run counter. It's here's a way to make one play look very different for a defense. If you want to chase counter like this we're going to make you wrong by pulling it if you want to overplay it with your inside backer we're going to make you wrong by hitting it underneath him if you want to read buck sweep hard we're going to make you wrong by giving it and then running counter so we're going to make the same play multiple so it's not so much as misdirection as it is really putting a strain defensively on those players so that's another way in our offense that we will take one play and make it many. Our goal is to do that with every run play. Every run play we're able to, we want to take it, use formations. We want to take it, use RPOs. We want to take it, use screens or whatever we can to make it a standalone play built inside of the series-based offense that we run. Hope you guys got something from this. Tomorrow, I'll be going through how we actually do this in a first drive situation. So I'm actually going to use... My newest book, I just put out an organizational book. One of the sections in there talks about building a play sheet, building a call sheet. How do we make that work in a game? How does this look in a game? And so I'm going to go through, I'm going to talk about the different ways uh, that we will build this in. So how we look at it, how we see it. Hopefully you'll get something from it. Uh, if you haven't done so already, appreciate if you would like and subscribe to my channel. If you got any questions, feel free to shoot them to me. I'll try to make sure we address them in a future episode. Thank you guys.